what is up everybody bitcoin j back with another video this one is about bitcoin having and it's the countdown has the countdown begun obviously the countdown has begun so what's up everybody i hope everybody's doing good <clears throat> i want to talk about this because bitcoin is definitely like the main topic right now uh bitcoin is going crazy i mean it's hovering around 88 to 80 to, it, it is close to nine thousand dollars it's hovering around and is, is it any secret as to why that's the case well could it be all the talk about the the institutional money being getting ready to be you know infused into the into the crypto markets yes i think that's a lot to do with it but but the biggest i think has to come with a couple things one the bitcoin having or how halloween i don't know how you pronounce it but that that sounds like it could be close but anyway um the fact that bitcoin's gonna have meaning as you process a block the block reward is cut down every four years i don't know if you guys knew that but do your research if you think i'm wrong please hit the comment section and and, and hit me up but uh before we get too in detail and I don't go too in detail anyway, but I'm going to go a little bit in detail now and as well as ramble just a smidge. Uh, please smash that uh, like button and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed, because if you have not subscribed, you're going to be missing on a lot of little juicy information that I like to come up with every now and then. But um, I'm a little juiced up right now because I'm excited. All right. Check it out. All right, Bitcoin halves every four years. Okay, at least that's been the the you know the way it's been happening in the last couple of years since two thousand and nine. Anyway, so every four years, the block reward has been cut down. You know, from fifty to twenty five, uh, you know, and so on and so forth. So the next block halving is supposed to go uh, about I think it's May of next year. Let's look. Let it take a piggy. All right, the next halving is expected to take place. Right here, here, follow the cursor. The next halving is expected to take place on 22nd of May next year, and the BTC block reward will go from the current amount of 12.5 BTC to 6.25 BTC. Now, I don't know if you're very aware of how supply and demand works, okay? If the demand is extremely high, yet the supply is limited, which we all know that there's going to ever be this is what we're told 21 million bitcoin ever mined and minted it's gonna be a scarcity involved okay because when that happens there's not first of all right now as we speak there's not enough bitcoin to go around for one person in the world like every person cannot have one bitcoin it's just not enough of them so what you have is the people that are aware of what cryptocurrencies represent and the value of a Bitcoin or the value of cryptocurrencies and where it's going to take us in the next few, you know, next, I don't know, five, 10, next few years or so, 15, 20 years or in the future period. Okay. The people that understand that and they have the money, they're soaking it up. Like, you know, the Tim Drapers and uh, the Jack Dorsey's Jack Dorsey, for those of you who don't know, is the CEO of Twitter and also the founder of Square. You know, the little thing you put your card in, you make payments on and you can take it anywhere. It's a pretty cool system if you don't have it. You need, you know, if you have a little personal business or you want to accept money, check it out. It's pretty cool. Anyway, Jack Dorsey is buying $10,000 worth of Bitcoin every week, every week. Now, I don't understand personally why he's capping himself or maybe there's a reason why he's doing $10,000 a week. Maybe he's diversifying his portfolio, which he's a billionaire. I don't think it matters to him much, but. If billionaires like Jack Dorsey understand the value of a Bitcoin and that he needs to get into the game, you need to understand that. Now, this is not financial advice. You'll never hear me tell you that. And I don't want you to think so. This is sheerly for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> Actually, it's for my entertainment purposes because I kind of enjoy doing this. But I, I, I hope that the, for those of you who are tuning in, that you kind of like it. You know, I get my personal opinion on it. I like to ha be a little humorous about it because, you know, life's too short to be too serious. And this isn't very serious, but it is serious. You know, it's not a, it's not that important, but it's real important, because if you don't understand that this is the first new digital at well, excuse me, this is the first new asset class in 100 years as my man, the digital asset investor. Shout out to my boy and the modern investor always talk about 
shout outs great guys if you haven't listened to them or subscribed to the channel you need to do so very very informative guys all right uh digital asset investors more so uh xrp uh lean and the digital asset investor or excuse me and the modern investor is just he just reports on the news and gives his his takes on certain things in the cryptocurrency scene so i get a lot of information and a lot of inspiration from those guys so i want to give them a shout out so i want to let you guys know anyway um if you don't understand the value that bitcoin holds now a lot of people say well bitcoin doesn't process um the process time is slow or you really can't do anything with bitcoin you can't buy anything with bitcoin it doesn't do anything what's well, not meant to do anything quite simply quite quite frankly it's meant to be the digital version of gold so what, what can you do with gold right now if you had a gold bar sitting on your desk or in your lap what can you do with it first of all it'd be heavy as shit so i don't know where you're going to take it god bless you and really, who's going to cash the gold out? So let's say you want to take a, a portion of the gold. I don't even know what you call a portion of gold, an ounce. Okay, I guess, you know, you just say, hey, I'm going to spend an ounce of gold on this. First of all, you wouldn't do that. And the reason you wouldn't do that is because gold is a store of value, a physical store of value, right? It's meant to house wealth. All right. So you buy gold to, uh, you know, you know, leave to your heirs or to to have some, you know, uh, money when in your in your you know golden years or whatever the case may be but you can't it's not very it's not very uh transportable <laughs> you can't really do much with it right same with bitcoin now you can transfer bitcoin it's, it's digital you now you can go anywhere you you know if you have a wallet uh web-based wallet you have a uh you know hot wallet or cold wallet cold storage wallet or anything you know ledgers and stuff of that nature so you can take it anywhere but it's not meant to do nothing. And would you spend your Bitcoin on a coffee at Starbucks or, or at Whole Foods? Would you? I know I wouldn't. I'm not spending my Bitcoin. I'm holding it. I'm hodling it. Why? Because it is just like the physical version of its its counterpart. It is a digital version of gold. It's a store value. So when the price of Bitcoin skyrockets, it's because, in my opinion, the halving is coming. So next year, the block reward is going to get cut down. The closer we get to 2000, I want to say it's 2023 or 2024, is the very last Bitcoin will be mined. So the value is there. Hence, the skyrocketing price. Now, as we all know, cryptocurrencies are very volatile, right? And that's the whole, that's what attracts you to it. <clears throat> because that's what attracts, you know, investors to anything is because it's the possibility of making money. You buy low, sell high, right? But when the volatility is like it is in cryptocurrency, it's almost insane, especially with Bitcoin. You know, you go from thirty five hundred dollars coin all the way to eight grand. I mean, what what is what is that? Uh, one hundred and twenty, one hundred thirty percent or so. I mean, what 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 other investment does that? None. No other investment out there. So you have to ask yourself: Should I be involved in something like that, or should I play it safe? You know how? Yeah. You know, <laughs> I play around with investments. You know, I buy some stocks every now and then, and me, you know, because I'm a normal guy. And I'm not just uh, putting all my eggs in one basket. Although I got a lot of eggs in that basket, I still buy stocks. You know, the the uh, Alibaba stocks, the uh, you know, Facebook, um, uh, Apple, you know, Amazon, you know, things of that nature. So you know, it's funny. You know, somebody mentioned that Uber just came out with their stock. They had the initial public offering, right? Their IPO came out, and it didn't do very well. So did Lyft. Lyft had their uh, IPO uh, and it didn't do very well. It was very mixed reviews on it. Some people said, oh, yeah, it did well, did what we thought. Other people said, man, that was a flop because it's not the same, folks. Ever since the introduction of cryptocurrencies, the, the, normal, the normalcy is not normal. People don't, they don't gravitate towards that anymore because now you have more inclusion. Before, IPOs were just for people who had money to invest, the big whales, the business people the you know entrepreneurs not the everyday people that you know blue collar workers that go to you know 7-eleven work their job you know seven eight hours a day not the people that work at a ford plant or a gm plant you know busting their hump that, that really you know you got your stocks you got your you know you know company match stuff like that but there was really nothing that you could invest in that could truly truly have the potential to change your life well now you do and it has more inclusion so 
the allure of the stock market isn't the same anymore, folks. And that's the key because you have Bitcoin. Bitcoin changed the game in 2008. Thanks to the stock market crash, it changed the game, gave everybody like you and me an opportunity to partake in the, the first new dig, first new asset class in 100 years. So we're at the ground floor of like the Internet. We're at the ground floor of the railroad system. We're at the ground floor of automobiles. And if you don't take your chance, I'm not telling you you're going to make a million dollars. I will never say that. But guess what? It's just like anything else. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. 100%. You got to take a shot. Even if you lose everything. Hey, that's on you. So if I lose my money, if I invest in something like this, the stock market, Bitcoin, whatever, then that's on me. But I'm going to take my shot. You know what? I'm not afraid to lose. You shouldn't be afraid to lose either. So um, I just want to talk about why I think Bitcoin is going ballistic and parabolic, as they call it. And I really don't see it pulling back much. Yes, it's going to pull back. I'm not an idiot. It'll pull back. But where will it pull back to is the question. Now, a lot of people will say and a lot of people I know will say, oh, I'm just going to wait. It's going to come back down and I'm going to buy it when it's lower. Well, OK, I hear you. And you could buy it when it's lower. But the lower that it will be will be higher than it is now. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Listen, this is Bitcoin, Jay. This is Get That Crypto. That's my channel. Um, I, I, there's so much out there, man. It's like a, like I said, it's a buffet of information on in cryptocurrencies right now. All right, and it, it don't take my word for it. You know, I'm, I'm look, I do my research. I go out there and I find other people's takes on things. You know, uh, here, here's one here. Three reasons why Bitcoin will will hit 30k by the end of 2019. 30k. Come on, man. Yeah, will it pull back? Possibly, but it'll be pulling back higher than it is right now. So you need to get as much as you can with whatever you have. Listen, you know, I tell people this all the time and, in, in, you know, in my day job, you know, because I still work. I'm not crypto rich yet, but I'm, I'm working on it. And I tell people this. Hey, man, we waste more money than we realize. You ever go to a, a movie, right? You spend what? Twelve dollars, eight dollars, eight to twelve dollars to get into the theater, right? That's not where they get you. They get you the concession stands, cause guess what? You don't want that popcorn. That buttery popcorn, man, is delicious, especially with those that that cheese sprinkle. Oh, and, I, and I'm not sure which theater. I don't know if it's AMC or whatever, but they if they got that cheese sprinkle, you ain't got to get that. Well, that alone, that's like fifteen, twenty dollars. So you just wasted twenty eight bucks. That's one person, by the way. And if you got two or three people with you, they're going to want some jujubes, some, some some Twizzlers or something. So you're going to spend 50 to $60 on concession alone, not to mention the price of admission, right? So let's say that little trip to the movie theater cost you a buck 20. Well, that 120 bucks could have went a lot further if you'd have invested in some cryptocurrency. Every little bit counts. Every little bit counts. Bit being the key phrase. And every pun intended, because that's why they call it Bitcoin, because every bit counts, right? Every bit. So as much as you can get, you need to get it and hold it, right? All right, so three reasons for a new all-time high in 2019, all right? Speaking to Bloomberg TV on Tuesday, May 28, 2019, the Kinetic co-founder highlighted three important factors that will drive Bitcoin to a new all-time high. First, Chu identified growing institutional Bitcoin adoption with many conglomerates developing products and services around BTC. In 2019 alone, firms like Fidelity and Microsoft have made massive announcements about plans to adopt BTC. You see what I'm saying, folks? When you got the big boys that don't need nothing, they don't need no, no, they don't need nothing. They already dominate the market. But they see that this is going to change the world, the face of finance, the face of commerce. They're getting involved. Come on. Don't be sleeping. Don't get caught sleeping, man. All right. Chu also highlighted the growing IPO investors fatigue as noticed in the recent offerings made by Uber and Lyft. Did we just not talk about that? We did. Oh, that's cute. Crypto kitties. That's cute. All right. I think and quote, this is what Chu said. I think that we are seeing a counter. Counter cyclical argument with the recent disappointments of Uber and Lyft IPOs in the market. 
People are looking for different types of tech story and one per perhaps accessible to all. Absolutely. All right. Here's the deal. Cryptocurrencies does not exclude anyone. You have every opportunity just like anyone else. All right. It's sitting there in your face. In your face. If you deny it, that's on you. All right. Don't be don't be in denial. Be the one that takes action. All right. Again, I will stress this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. I'm not telling you to buy anything. I'm not telling you to invest in anything. But I implore you to do extremely good research. All right. If you're going to blow some money, blow some money on something that could potentially make you money. Right. All right. I think I've made my point. I think I've stressed this enough. All right. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Bell notification. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.